the Chinese President Xi Jinping gave a warm welcome to former top U.S. diplomat Henry Kissinger as the U.S. is now pursuing for closer ties with China. Kissinger's surprise trip to the Chinese capital comes amid a flurry of visits by top U.S. officials. Kissinger, who is widely respected in China and has paid regular visits since leaving office, especially uh, during the time of Mao Zedong, said he was grateful that Beijing had arranged the meeting in the building where he had met with Chinese leaders during his first visit to China. Now, Kissinger also met with China's top diplomat Wang Yi and with Defence Minister Li Shang Fu during his trip, which Washington said was a private visit. What stands out is the fact that this diplomat will be turning 100 this year. Now, the former Secretary of State, who is now going to be 100 years old, played a crucial role in helping China emerge from a diplomatic isolation in the 1970s. Perhaps that's why the US is valuing his diplomatic wisdom. Tensions between the world's two largest economies have heightened over a range of issues that include the war in Ukraine, even Taiwan and trade curbs between the United States and China. Remember, in July of 1971, Kissinger became the first high-ranking U.S. official to visit communist China. His secret meetings with Chinese leaders paved the way for then-U.S. President Richard Nixon's ice-breaking trip the following year. In the decades that followed, U.S.-China's ties blossomed alongside their economic interdependence. But in more recent years, as we all know, this relationship between the world's two largest economies has deteriorated significantly. Before I bring in my guest, let's also listen in to some reactions. I'm really glad to meet Mr. Kissinger. It's been over three years since our last meeting. You've just celebrated your 100th birthday, and I wish you a long and healthy life. There's an old saying in China that great virtues come with longevity. You're 100 years old and have paid more than 100 visits to China. The 200s features a special meaning to your current China visit. In July 52 years ago, Premier Zhou Enlai met with you here in Villa No. 5 at the Diotai State Guest House, which ushered in the process of normalization of China-US relations. It has a great historic meaning. The China-US relations was at a turning point back then. The Chinese people will never forget their old friends and China-US relations is always connected with the name of Kissinger. Mr. President, it is a great privilege to be able to visit China and it is extraordinarily courteous of you to arrange the meeting in Villa 5 of the State Guest House where my first meeting with a Chinese leader took place. That the relations between our two countries would be central to the peace in the world and to the progress of our society. All right, Andrew K.P. Lung, who is an international and independent China strategist, is joining me live right now. M many thanks to you, Mr. Lung, for joining in. Before I delve deeper uh, into the significance of this visit, do tell me how important is the state guest house where Kissinger was hosted by the Chinese president? Well, let's not forget that um, Henry Kissinger is no longer a government official. Yes. And he was visiting uh, Beijing uh, in the capacity of a private citizen. Nevertheless, um, Kissinger has always been remembered uh, by various administrations uh, of the Chinese government as a good friend uh, of China because it was through him uh, that China was ushered into the uh, the, uh, into the United Nations, recognized as the um, uh, the capital representing uh, China, uh, excluding Taiwan, uh, and also broker uh, a honeymoon period uh, in the relationship between China and the United States. But time has changed uh, because the original idea that by um, helping China to enter into the um, 
the world, as it were, the WTO, and China would become more liberal, more open, more like the United States. Uh, obviously, uh, these expectations have fallen by the wayside. Uh, without realizing right. that there is no one-size-fits-all formula for all countries. But nevertheless, um, the relationship between China and the United States uh, have plummeted, right. uh, and the two countries are standing at the edge of a cliff. And that's why this visit is very important in the eyes of Beijing right. um, and also in the eyes of the United States, because if the two powers are coming to blows, this would... Uh, easily translate into a world war because both countries are nuclear powered and and have very powerful delivery systems it's interesting how you speak about kissinger bringing in uh, you know he, how he that that role he played in the blossoming ties that once upon a time beijing and washington shared and perhaps that also goes on uh, to elaborate on the significance of that state guest house where he was hosted because as xi jinping also highlighted that that was the place that uh, Kissinger had first uh, met the Chinese president. But the U.S. has now called Kissinger's visit a private one. Uh, but given Kissinger's stature as the former U.S. Secretary of State, could his visit now act as a back channel for U.S.-China negotiations? Well, uh, according to the reports, uh, this Kissinger visit um, was arranged uh, well before uh, the recent visit by uh, Blinken and Yell Ye Yellen um, and John Kerry, mm. um, it had been on the cards for a long, long time. And as I said, the basic fundamental differences between the two countries, if anything, have intensified uh, with the Biden administration, um, even uh, after the Blinken and, Yeltsin and Yellen visit, um, immediately um, um, uh, in, initiated a very uh, stringent program uh, forbidding uh, the United States, uh, any United States finance investing uh, in China's key technologies uh, and trying to tighten the stranglehold uh, over China's um, um, uh, techno techno technological advance. All right. um, and also uh, rallying uh, American allies around the world to contain China. So I think that the, the, uh, there was a great deal of rhetoric uh, about the United States not trying to derail China. But on the other hand, uh, what happens on the ground, the reality is very, very different. So right. I don't think that China, the Beijing is under any illusion uh, this um, uh, visit is going to make any difference. Right. You've rightfully pointed out uh, the narrative that's being built around the United States. We'll delve deeper into what is the message that China is trying to send out. But why is Henry Kissinger so regarded in China when he has a controversial reputation in other parts of Asia, especially for his role in the Vietnam War? Yes, uh, because uh, 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 Kissinger has established himself as a highly respected um, global strategist, uh, and of course, he's, he's an American. He's a, he had a hell high office in the United States, uh, and as I said, he played a key role uh, in the turning point uh, in the relationship between the United States and China. And that's why um, the um, Beijing authorities and also the Chinese people have a very, very good view, uh, opinion uh, of uh, Henry Kissinger, mm. and also uh, he's highly respected, not only in the United States, but uh, around the world as a, as, a, as a global strategist. And that's why um, he was able to see President Xi, whereas uh, even um, um, Secretary uh, Yell uh, Yellen uh, and also John Kerry uh, did not, you know, were not uh, 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 given the, the, the privilege of meeting President Xi himself. Mr. Lung, a month ago, we've seen China also host business leaders like Bill Gates and Elon Musk, only to highlight the long-standing economic relationship between the two countries. And now there's the former Secretary of State. Is this Beijing's attempt to push back against what it sees as the Biden administration's efforts to contain China geopolitically, and not just geopolitically, militarily and technologically too? Well, there is a bipartisan consensus um, between the Democrats and the um, uh, the Republicans. Uh, there is not much 
um, uh, agreement between the two parties, but there is one single agreement of which they both see eye to eye, and that is China needs to be contained, needs to be confronted. Um, uh, and because China is seen as an existential threat uh, to the so-called American-led uh, global order and also to American hegemony. Uh, because they're seeing China's now eating Americans' lunch uh, on technologies. Gone were the days when China is just a factory producing cheap goods. And that's why at that time, uh, Americans saw fit uh, to outsource some of the dirty industries, uh, polluting industry to China. And China had to accept them because China needed them. Uh, the investments and to grow their jobs. But now the situation has changed. China has leapfrogged uh, to high technology and is uh, growing militarily, uh, geopolitically, diplomatically. And so China is seen as an existential threat. And there is a bipartisan consensus on that. Mm -hmm. And then the Kissinger yeah. visit is unlikely to change this reality. All right. Here's hoping that uh, both the United States and China uh, stand to benefit from Kissinger's visit and his diplomatic wisdom. Many thanks to you, Mr. Lung, for joining in with your precious inputs.